Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not become tired of doing good, for at the right time we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Hey, Grove Kids, welcome back. I hope that you guys are enjoying these lessons and the way they're set up too. Let us know if you have any questions or comments. We're here to make your walk with Jesus a little fun and also rewarding. We know that God has some amazing stuff in store for each and every one of you. Age doesn't matter because guess what? In today's story, we're going to learn a little bit more about this cliffhanger idea. The story's not over yet, and it starts with a little baby, baby Moses. The world is going to do some pretty crazy changes all because of this baby. So I hope you listen carefully and know that it doesn't matter what our age is, what our skin color is, what our gender is, what whatever it is, where we live, how much money our family makes, none of that matters because we have a God who is so powerful, so loving, so strong, and so ready to pick us up and make a new life for us, even out of a basket in the Nile. Like that is amazing, guys. I hope you love today's story and have a little more grit in your life, knowing that we can get through some pretty tough stuff if we're having faith and trust in the Lord. We love you guys. Bye. Hey, everyone. So the Egyptian Pharaoh was scared. There were so many Israelites, he thought they might join the Egyptians' enemies. So Pharaoh forced the Israelites into slavery. And that's the way it was for hundreds of years. But no matter how hard the Egyptians made the Israelites work, the Hebrew family still continued to grow. Preposterous! I declare that all Hebrew baby boys must be thrown into the Nile River. I know, this was terrible news. God had promised to bless the whole world through the Israelites, but not only were they enslaved now, they were in danger of being completely wiped out. And in the middle of all this, a woman from the tribe of Levi, Jochebed, and her husband Amram were about to have a brand new baby. Where does this part go? So insert part F at right angles with part M before locking part Z. Pyramids have got nothing on crib assembly. So if Jochebed gave birth to a baby girl, they wouldn't need to worry about Pharaoh's law. But when Jochebed had her baby, you guessed it. It's a boy! Pharaoh is not touching this baby. So for three months, Jochebed and Amram and their daughter Miriam hid the new baby boy. That. Uh, no puppy. Uh, nothing to see here. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mommy's gonna buy you they tried, but after three months, there was just no way to keep hiding a baby boy with a healthy set of lungs. Jochebed wove a basket out of tall grass and coated it with tar. Give him to me now. But they'll still hear the baby in the basket. Come with me. Jochebed was so determined to save her baby that she made a risky and very creative move, might I add. Are we giving our baby a bath? Nope. We are giving him a chance. Now stay close by and make sure he's safe. So maybe Jochebed figured this was a place no one would come? Or maybe she knew it was the favorite bathing spot of Pharaoh's daughter. Sure enough, Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to bathe. Bring me that basket at once. I mean, Miriam must have been terrified, right? But she stayed hidden and watched to see what might happen. Poor thing. This must be one of the Hebrew babies. Miriam gathered every ounce of courage she had and ran up to Pharaoh's daughter. Would you like me to get one of the Hebrew women to take care of him for you? Yes, yes, that's a perfect idea. This was the best news! So Miriam ran home as fast as she could and told her mother everything that happened. Then together, they returned to the princess. Take this baby and feed him for me. I'll pay you. I promise, I will treat him like my very own son. And she got paid! Jochebed was able to care for her son at home. And when he grew up, 
she took him to live at the palace with the Pharaoh's daughter. The princess called him Moses, a word that meant to draw out, because she pulled the baby out of the water. Get it? The end. That's amazing. I mean, there's no way Moses' mom could have known her baby would be safe. Yes, but Amram and Jacobet didn't give up. I mean, they held on. They didn't know what to do, but they got creative. And they took the next step. So what's our part in the story? Well, things in our lives can feel really big and difficult too. Yeah, I got assigned to this group project at school and I had no idea where to start. I just wanted to quit the whole thing. What happened? Well, I prayed about it and asked for help. And eventually everyone joined in and it actually turned out okay. See, yes! When you aren't sure what to do next, ask God for help. We can also think about how we can follow Jesus during difficult times. We can start by loving God and loving others. Whether it's a friendship in trouble or a fight with your parents, you can hold on. Stay with it. God will be with you, even when things get messy. I think you guys got it. I'll see you next time. Bye. 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 So here's the thing. Hold on, even when you don't know what to do. That's how grit grows. the world